Akhenaten, the heretic king. Amenhotep IV changed his name to Akhenaten and defied tradition by establishing a new religion that believed that there is but one god, the sun god Aten. By the time Akhenaten took the throne, his family had been ruling Egypt for nearly 200 years and had established a huge empire dominating Palestine, Phoenicia, and Nubia. A century before, Tosmoth III had swept all before him, conquering the Middle East and Nubia and establishing a military priesthood which now controlled the empire. At the center was the god Amon of Thebes and his priests had become powerful. The imperial elegance of Egypt was supreme. It was rich and confident, with soldiers and officials established in foreign countries. Of course, foreigners, in turn, came to live in Egypt, bringing new customs and ideas. The young prince and future king grew up in this new and changing Egypt. At the beginning of his reign, the young pharaoh, Amenhotep IV, still worshipped the old gods, especially Amen of Thebes and the sun god Rahur Akhti. However, within a few years there were changes. He abandoned work on a temple dedicated to Rahur Akhti and began to build a new temple to worship the sun god Aten. Aten was never shown in human or animal form, but represented as the sun disk with extended rays, ending in hands. Aten was the life-giving and life-sustaining power of the sun. Unlike the old gods, he had no carved image hidden in a dark room deep with the temple but was worshipped out in the light of day. Queen Nefertiti, famous from her portray bust, is thought to have been an Asian princess. She encouraged and supported her husband in his revolutionary ideas, and together they took on the religious establishment. In the fifth year of his reign, the king changed his name from Amenhotep to Akhenaten, or servant of the Aten, thus formally declaring his new religion. He moved his capital from Thebes to a place now called Tal al-Amarna, more than 300 kilometers north, on a desert bay on the east side of the river Nile. Here he began to build a new city, which he called Akhet Aten, which means Horizon of Aten. The new city had many spacious villas with trees, pools, and gardens. Akhenaten encouraged artistic inventiveness and realism, and the walls of the temple and houses were painted in an eccentric new style. Among the surviving works of this period are the colossal statues of Akhenaten, the paintings from his private residence, the bust of his wife Nefertiti, and that of his mother Queen T. These works are unique in Egyptian art as they don't flatter the king and his family, but reveal them as real people, in all their beauty and decay. The religion of Aten is not completely understood today. We don't know that Akhenaten and his wife Nefertiti worshipped the sun god, and the names of other gods and goddesses were removed from view. The funerary religion of Osiris was dropped, and Akhenaten became the source of blessings for people after death. But this religious and artistic renaissance was short-lived. Akhenaten made himself unpopular by closing the old temples and his lack of enthusiasm for the practical deities of kingship was determinal to Egypt's imperial interests. Surviving documents show that Akhenaten paid little attention to the army and navy foreign trade began to fall off and internal taxes began to disappear into the pockets of local officials. When Akhenaten died, he was succeeded briefly by Semen Khara, his favorite, and then by Tut Anch Aten, who changed his name to Tut Anch Amen, dropping Aten and embarrassing Amen. Tutankhamun eventually returned Egypt to its traditional values and Akhenaten's memory was erased. Later, Egyptian historians would refer to him only as the heretic king. The city of Akhenaten was abandoned and the court returned to Thebes. 
Later, Hur Muhib raised the city to the ground and Ramses II reused the stone blocks of its temple for his work at nearby Hermopolis. Akhenaten was an intellectual and philosophical revolutionary who had the power and wealth to indulge his ideas. However, the ancient Egyptians were a deeply religious people who loved their ancient traditions and were not ready to embarrass such radical changes. It would not be until the Christian era that the Egyptians would finally reject all gods in favor of a single universe deity.